Health Watch is presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare. Here, caring for you. Welcome to Health Watch presented by UMass Memorial Healthcare. Studies suggest that in the U.S., fewer than 70 young athletes die from sudden cardiac death each year. We recently spoke with a pediatric cardiologist about heart disease. Explain the difference between pediatric and adult heart disease. Adult heart disease primarily uh, circles around cardiovascular disease, which means blood, uh, blood vessel disease in the blood vessels that supply the heart muscle with blood. So uh, that's also known as coronary artery disease, atherosclerosis, that sort of thing. And th those problems usually happen as a result of kind of a lifetime of wear and tear that builds up in those arteries from things like diabetes, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, and that sort of thing. Pediatric heart disease, on the other hand, much more deals with congenital problems. So those are problems that kids are born with. Uh, genetic uh, abnormalities, structural abnormalities where the heart doesn't form particularly well. Um, those, that's the big difference. And as a result, uh, pediatric heart disease will oftentimes manifest with, a lot different, uh, with much different symptoms as opposed to adult heart disease. What do the symptoms of heart disease in a child look like? A lot of times what we uh, think about are exertional symptoms, so, so symptoms uh, that come about when a child is exercising. Now that actually represents uh, actually a small population of pediatric patients with heart disease but that is, I feel, like what a lot of people are worried about the most. The athletes who are out in the field who you know, have a sudden unfortunate event where they have a fainting episode or near-death episode or unfortunately a sudden death episode uh, out in the field. Um, the other forms of congenital problems that happen uh, with pediatric patients oftentimes are picked up right after the baby is born because that structural problem is there and it presents with symptoms right after birth. How important is a defibrillator? Defibrillators are extremely important. Um, in pediatric heart disease, especially the ones that result in sudden cardiac death uh, of athletes, uh, a defibrillator is one of the only uh, things that has the potential to reverse that problem and, uh, and result in, uh, in a save for that child. What should parents look out for? The main thing with respect to symptoms in, uh, in active uh, uh, pediatric patients, we look for signs of chest pain with exercise, fainting with exercise, unusual shortness of breath or feelings of palpitations with exercise, exercise intolerance. A child can't do the things that they used to be able to do. All those could theoretically be signs of uh, heart problems uh, in that active child. That being said, it's much more common for these very common symptoms to present in a child where there's nothing wrong with the heart. But of course, when we hear those symptoms in an exercising child, we treat them with a little bit more caution. You talked about what parents should look out for. What kind of treatments are available for children? A lot of the uh, diseases that result in these unfortunate events, um, most of the uh, therapy or treatment that we have for them is preventative therapy. So there are certain conditions that might result in one of those unfortunate sudden cardiac uh, events in an athlete where um, uh, outside of a defibrillator, which might get them out of trouble if they develop a really serious heart problem on the spot, uh, most of the therapy that we have is really preventative therapy. That is, we would recommend that some of those individuals refrain from intense competitive athletics. There are other uh, situations where um, uh, a device can be placed inside the child to uh, try to prevent those arrhythmias or reverse those arrhythmias uh, from happening while they're exercising. We've seen stories of children dying unexpectedly from undetected heart conditions. What advice do you have for parents who may be concerned? So the most important thing to screen for these potentially dangerous conditions would be a thorough history and physical exam from the patient's primary care provider. Um, the other, there's been a lot of uh, controversy with respect to the use of ECGs or electrocardiography in, uh, in pre-screening, uh, pre-athletic screening for uh, young athletes. Uh, and that data is, it's unfortunately, um, uh, it's not perfect. And so we're not sure what the right answer is with respect to the use of EKGs for pediatric patients who are going to be athletes. Again, the most important thing is a thorough history and physical exam to look for any uh, uh, symptoms that the patient might have or any family history that might imply that there's some sort of genetic problem that is being passed in that family that could put that patient at risk. Can a child overdo it with exercise? That's a pretty common question and definitely a concern that a lot of parents have is my kid overdoing it. Uh, and I would say in general, no. If, if, if a child is um, uh, you know, staying well hydrated and you know, eating healthy and doing all those sorts of things and getting enough sleep at night, it, it's hard for a kid to overdo it, so to speak, with exercise. Um, certainly, if a child has an underlying 
cardiac condition that we've been kind of talking about a little bit here, uh, intense physical exercise could be a risk for them, which is why we would recommend kind of a, a thorough screen before they begin athletics. But it would be very hard for an otherwise healthy kid to really overdo it with exercise in the sense that they're not going to, uh, their, their heart should be pretty healthy. They're not going to be able to uh, stress their heart out too much as long as their heart is healthy to begin with. When should they start screening student athletes? One of the questions that commonly comes up is uh, who should be screened and how thorough should that screen be? Again, our standard is anybody who's going to be playing um, uh, organized sports, we think that they should undergo a thorough history and physical exam with their primary care physician prior to uh, 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 participation in those kinds of things. When you get to that next layer of testing, for example, uh, EKGs, does every athlete need, a, uh, need an EKG prior to participation? There's actually a piece in the New York Times recently discussing this uh, issue. Uh, it becomes a lot more tricky, and that's because the uh, research that's been done on it is imperfect, and it has to do with the fact that uh, when, when we're talking about screening potentially 8 to 10 million athletes in the United States alone, um, most of those being high school athletes and then they say about 400, 500,000 intercollegiate athletes, that's a big burden, right? It, and who's going it, to, it's unfortunate, but who's going to pay for that? A, a lot of these screening uh, tests, insurance companies won't pay for those. Um, we participate in a few uh, heart screening events where we provide some of those services free of charge. Uh, but that also is somewhat unfair because then we're selecting a population for more intense screening and why shouldn't everybody have access to that screening? So it's something, it's a, the answers to those questions we're still trying to determine.